Welcome to the first episode of Lebanon Historical Society Presents. I'm David LaBelle, President of the Lebanon Historical Society. Lebanon has a long and illustrious history, and in these series, we will be taking you through it. The Lebanon Historical Society was founded in 1958. We are the keepers of Lebanon's history. Our artifacts are housed in the Marion Carter Home at 1 Campbell Street in Lebanon, New Hampshire. We do not have a public research facility, so now for the first time you will be able to see Lebanon's history here on this show. The series will focus on oral and written histories, walking tours, artifacts, and some rare film. And now I'd like to introduce you to Ed Ashey, our curator of the Lebanon Historical Society. Hello, my name is Edward Ashey. I'm the curator of the Lebanon Historical Society. I uh, always had an interest in Lebanon since I moved here in 1940 as a child and grew up in Lebanon all my life. And then in 1964, when we had the large fire in the center of Lebanon, and I saw all these buildings that I had known for uh, most of my life, were gone. And that's when I really wished that I had taken more pictures. So I started taking photos of the destruction after the fire, and then later on, the reconstruction of Lebanon. I took more photos, and then when it was finally finished in 1970, I took more photos, and now I'm, that's all I'm doing is history of Lebanon, uh, trying to record things that I remember, and uh, get together with other people and try to share some of their memories, and hopefully we'll, every little piece of the puzzle will fit together and we'll have a more complete history of Lebanon eventually. And now I think we'll uh, just take a walk down to the vault, which is down in the basement, and show you what's down there. We're going downstairs in the, in the vault where we have a lot of our artifacts and uh, recorded history of Lebanon and New Hampshire. It's not handicapped accessible. In fact, the Carter, Marion Carter building is not handicapped accessible, which is very, very good. But if somebody wants information, one of us from the Historical Society can come down and get it for them and bring it to them if they need it. And this is the vault. <coughs> it has a uh, a lot of items in here that we haven't even touched on. We've just put them down here for storage until we can get to them. Uh, we have file cabinets full of, full of photos. Um, all different subjects, people, area views, uh, parades, buildings. From here down is all streets, the different streets in Lebanon. So we've got Bank Street. We have a lot of information on Bank Street, old photos of homes. And this this used to be one Bank Street. And at some point they changed it, so the address to the Carter House is now uh, 1 Campbell Street. But it doesn't look like that anymore. The cupola on top, they had a small fire and they took that off and then re redesigned the whole building. But that's what it originally looked like. So we have a lot of pictures like that. We can look up if anybody needs any any history on anything. Sometimes when I'm uh, looking up on a particular subject, I'll have to go into that file, and then I'll have to go to this file. And then there's large pictures of different subjects, businesses, people events, and some biographies of some of the families, 
If I can't find anything in those, I go to this. And it's just a procession of getting information from one spot to another to another and, and getting it all together. And uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it takes hours. We have so many items here that are hidden. These pictures, maps, they should be out somewhere on display. And if we can ever get a large enough building in Lebanon with adequate parking, handicapped access, we would like to be able to do that and have it like a museum, a research, a better research area. We need a larger meeting room and of course, a library where we can have some of these things out for research. Here we have some old stereo views of Lebanon. And that's Green Street, right beside the First Baptist Church off of School Street. And that's, that's the Baptist Church. And there's the common, and the Lebanon Post Office is about where this building is here. That was the uh, various years. It was a hotel, uh, apartment house, lodging, and this is from the Levitt collection. Colburn Park with the first bandstand, okay. That was the first bandstand, no roof on it. <laughs> so they only did things on nice days, I guess. Uh, and here's more views. Of, uh, okay, that's a uh, bird's eye view from the top of the old town hall. That's looking down on Flynn Street towards the railroad station over in the background. And then this is the Unitarian Church on, uh, on the corner of Green Street. It is now, doesn't have the steeples and it's uh, used for the uh, Masonic Lodge. And then this one is down on Packer Street, down near the uh, Senior Center now. It used to be right across from the railroad depot. And at various times it was a uh, Catholic church, a movie theater, Catherine Churchill Warehouse. And it is now taller and longer in the same, the same building as there, but it's a lot bigger and it's an apartment house. And we have a lot more views like that. I, these would go in a, like a stereo viewer and you, it would look like a 3D picture. These are a deposit box from the original uh, bank that was over across where the library is now. And the bank building was uh, torn down and the new library was put up there in the place of the bank. So we do have some of these. We have more artifacts up in the Lebanon room on the bank. I'll show you those when we get up there. Ballpoint pens, matchbook covers, rulers, advertising. There's some advertising fans. This was from the Commercial Livery and Garage Incorporated, Lebanon. Radio, they sold radios and batteries apparently. Ah, there it is right there. Hmm. Uh, house Furniture, E.F. Moody. These were popular advertising items back in those days because no air conditioning is the only way to keep cool. 
We have a number of those. Another advertising ink blotter. That was a popular way of advertising back then. Everybody used fountain pens or straight pens dipped in ink and you needed an ink blotter. These are just boxes of vital records, obituaries, weddings, that type of thing. Came out of newspaper clippings. History is a never-ending process. No one person knows, knows everything about the Lebanon history. So we, in the Lebanon Historical Society, we get together and we, we each have little tidbits that we know and pass on. Um, Cal Porter, the city historian, has done a great job of uh, getting articles in the newspaper on different subjects. And uh, uh, the late historian Robert Levitt was, uh, he probably knew 90, 95% of Lebanon's history. Between him and his great grand, his grandfather, he, uh, the two of them collected artifacts in history over the years and wrote things down. So that's how we got most of the history that we have now is from Robert Levitt. And he passed away a few years ago and he was a close friend of my family and I knew him all my life and uh, whenever I had a something I didn't wanted to know more about he would uh, like a five minute question or an answer it would take an hour <laughs> and I got a lot more history than what I thought I was going to get. So. Over here we have a lot of things on the uh, different World War, Civil War, Spanish American War, World War One. These are a lot of the donations we got from different families, the Dwaynells and the Bridgmans, Bentons, Norris Cotton, the Huff family, the Wood family. They uh, did a good job of keeping their family histories and passed them on to us photos and important papers. And on this side is basically the same, uh, different businesses and families. And, well, this is a bookcase from the old Lebanon Library when it was in the GAR Hall or the Old Soldiers Memorial Building. The first library was over there on the ground floor. And this is one of the bookcases, some of the books. And over here, up on the wall, we have the weather vane from the first, the original town hall, and that burned in 1923. It was, the original one was built in 1792 and then remodeled different times. But it burned to the ground in 1923, and we got the weather vane. And we have some hands from the clock. The old clock hands. Made out of wood with an iron pointer. And somehow those survived. And again, here's all the, the town histories. We have the Lebanon yearbook, the parrot. We have most all the issues of that. And city directories and town directories, we're missing a few. Hopefully if anyone has small one, we can fill in the vacant spots there. In this cabinet, we have uh, a few artifacts here that if I can get into it. <laughs> Lebanon has its own beverage company at one time. It was under ownership of several different uh,
people. And these were from probably about 19, 1930s, I would say, maybe 1920, late 20s. This I have not found too much information on yet. It says City Bottling Works, Lebanon, New Hampshire. That had to be the early 1900s. Hunt's department store used to import from Germany these little souvenir items. And you'll see more of these upstairs when we get up in what we call the Lebanon room. And they're made in Germany for A.B. Hunt, Ansel B. Hunt, Lebanon, New Hampshire. And he had a store on Hanover Street. And his son took it over. Harold Hunt took it over after he uh, retired. And I believe uh, after he passed, after Harold Hunt passed away, his wife ran it for a few years, and I believe it closed in 1961 thereabouts. So I guess. That's about all down here. Do we want to go up in the living room? Oh, coming up on the second floor now. And up here we have several rooms of items. Today I'll show you the what we call the living room. used over in West Lebanon at the uh, Rockland Military Academy. It moved here in 1903, moved to West Lebanon from the, <coughs> from the state of New York and merged with the New Hampshire Military Academy. And this is the first post office and it was in the bottom of the town hall, the old town hall. And it was the desk that they used, the former Lebanon New Hampshire postmaster. Looks like they have a key lock on it, too. And this is a uniform that uh, was worn in World War II by uh, Richard Cookman. Graduated in 1940 from West Lebanon and inducted in 1941 in the service, discharged January 25, 1945, and was donated by his daughter, the daughter of Richard Cookman, Sandra Cookman, I believe. These are some of the old businessmen of Lebanon, Colonel Frank Chur Churchill, and Kendrick Briggs, Dyer, these are all, all early uh, businessmen. There's Fred Carter, who Fred and his uh, wife Marion owned the Carter mansion here. And this here is the display of bank items. Open this up. These came from, most of this came from the original bank that was across the street where the library is. And old ink wells and, and stamps. These are just copies of the money that would have been used back in those days. And then down on the bottom we have the large locks that were used. And one of the door handles. A lot of the keys. And 
This here was a unusual key. It's called an extension key. It pulled out. Apparently, I had to go in in a recessed area. It was used to the for the front inside vestibule door of the old bank. And on the, in the corner here, we have the police items that uh, Robert Levitt's grandfather, George U. L. Levitt, was the sheriff of Lebanon in the, uh, Grafton County. And he was also a policeman in Lebanon. And over the years, he collected billy clubs and handcuffs, leg irons, badges, anything to do with the uh, Law and order. Here's some more of the advertising items like we saw down in the vault. They had plates made up of the church. Uh, this is the Congregational, the First Baptist Church, Sacred Heart Church. The, the one that the Sacred Heart Church now was built in 1938. And the original building that was there was the Huff Mansion. And you could see it from almost all over town because it set up on a rise. And they tore that down in 1938 and built the church that's there now. And here we have more of the souvenir plates. This was made. This was made in Austria for Kerry Lowe, who had a uh, store beside the town hall. The building is no longer there, but. At the high school in West Lebanon. That's no longer on Main Street. That was torn down a few years ago. And of course, the memorial, Soldiers Memorial. They made a lot of those. You are approaching Lebanon, population 6,000, out of debt, good hotels, garages, stores, schools, and churches, good manufacturing facilities. Locate in Lebanon, Lebanon Chamber of Commerce. Sign that's what that is. This appears to be a shaving look for G.S. Rogers. They used to have their own shaving mugs. That's in the barber shops, you had your own shaving mug, and they used your mug every time you went in to get a shave. This chair was made by Luther Al Alden of Lebanon. He made pieces of furniture, and it's called uh, an arrow design, arrow spoke style back on it. And that's the old town hall. And you can see the weather vane up there that you can't make out the arrow, but it would have been on the very top. And then the hands of the clock that are down in the vault came up from that. And the post office used to be down in this little corner here. It was like down in the basement, you had to go down the stairs uh, through a side door. There's another old view of Colburn Park. I haven't been in later years because the uh, Whipple Block is there. It's, uh, early 1900s. And that one was also made for A.B. Hunt in Lebanon. Another item that was popular with the, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, was ruby glass with the town on it. That is on Seminary Hill. At the time that picture was done, that was the Tilden, I uh, forget the actual name, Tilden uh, Seminary. It was a girl's, woman's, young woman's uh, academy type of thing, where they were taught manners and music and all those things that they did back then. But 
that building went through several fires and uh, it later became the Rockland Military Academy and then eventually the school became the high school for West Lebanon. And that had a fire, I believe, in 1932 when it was a Lebanon school. So it's burned and rebuilt several times because it's a lot smaller than than that. I guess probably we've covered just about everything up here. Thanks, Ed. Each episode of Lebanon Historical Society Presents will feature a trivia question to test your knowledge of Lebanon history. Our first trivia question is, how did Lebanon get its name? Email your answers to lebhissock at aol.com. On our next show, we'll announce the answer and the name of the person who answered correctly. Well, I hope you enjoyed our first show. It's a never-before-seen look into Lebanon's history. Stay tuned for future episodes where you will see and learn more. I'm Dave LaBelle. And I'm Ed Ashey. And, and this, this has been Lebanon Historical Society, Society Presents. Presents.